Hey everybody, what's up? So a couple days ago, we showed you how we installed Nerdio Manager for Enterprise, did the basic setup wizard. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how you can build a, a full Azure Virtual Desktop environment all by Nerdio. So in this first part here, we're going to cover setting up some of the prereqs. So if I go into settings, I've done some of this stuff already, but we're just going to kind of go through it real quick. So one of the things that I missed early on that you want to make sure you, you hit on is some people, they might want to build, say, Nerdio in its own resource group to track costs. You have to make sure that you want to use a net, network and subnet that's in the same resource group as Nerdio. Just based on the code, that the way they wrote it, it, that's going to be a good best practice. And so one of the things I did was here is you can kind of go in and you can click at link Azure network and you select your network and you'll link it in here. I found that that was actually a requirement and without that it was not, it would not work um, my build. So that is one of the things we have to do. So on this side here, inside of the Nerdio environment, what you can do too as well is you can go in here and you can set your account that's gonna be created as the local default admin, which I like to do. So we create that. Um, one other thing we have to do here, which we will do in a second after we go and set up the REST API. So mine's already enabled, but basically you'll click enable in here. And what it does is it goes and you, you authenticate and it's going to do is it's actually going to create an app integration for you. And you'll have your 10 ID and your client ID. And you're going to do is you're going to generate your secret from here and you'll copy it. And then you go back over to this area where we have secure variables. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually you're going to create client secret as a secure variable and hit the put the value in there. And we're going to be using that in the script itself. Now, from a from getting ready, from a getting ready perspective, that for the most part is all you're going to have to do, except one other thing that I ended up finding later on and I wanted to kind of share it is in order for it to actually add users to your pools, what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna go into Azure, you're gonna find the resource group, and then under Access Control IAM, you need to give the app that it creates certain access. And so what you do is you do add role assignment, and then you're gonna to go to the Privilege Administrator, select User Access Administrator, Hit next, and then under select number members, you search for Nerdio. You'll find that Nerdio app. You're gonna hit select, next. I select the second one. Just, you don't want it to give any privilege roles. Its job is just to be able to add people to the pool. Next, review and assign, and then. That's all you'll have to do. And now that we've finished the prereqs, let's go through actually the setup. So from here, we're going to go to Azure Runbooks. And so you'll see is if you actually search for initial AVD, you're going to find the template. So what you actually will have to do here is clone it. And then once you clone it, it creates this copy, as you can see here. And so within the copy, the key is that you're going to have to go and set the required variables. So you're already going to have your secure virus client secret in there. You're going to go set your app URL, which is the URL of your Nerdio portal. You're going to take that client ID, scope, and tenant ID from the area that we were in earlier for the REST API client. You're going to put in your subscription. Now, one of the things the documentation got wrong that we like to be very clear on here is for certain items, you have to make sure that you actually format it correctly. So resource group name, obviously, so that's Nerdio. This is the VNet that I created inside of that resource group. This is the subnet I created. This is my region. One of the things I did do as well is in their code, they're deploying like 20H2 or something. So I went and I, I got the, um, the 24H2 build. I kept their, their standard image size. Now for workspace name, it has to be all one word, no spaces. 
you can put the, call the friendly name, whatever you want to call it. There's your description. Desktop image name, again, and host pool name, all, one word, no spaces, unlike what I saw before. I leave the storage name. Time zone works for me. User UPNs, you can put in who you want to be assigned to that pool. So I just put me in another test user. There's your VM free, uh, prefix. So when it builds those VMs, that's what it's going to prefix it with. VM sizes, disk sizes. I just keep most of this. Um, I did change the, uh, the capacity, starting with one and having a, a burst capacity of two. And once you've actually done all that, it's going to be time to actually run it. Okay, so now let's run things. So I'm going to hit this drop down. I'm going to hit run schedule. You see advanced settings uh, if you want to change the timeout or whatever. So I'm going to click run now. And so you're going to see here is down the tasks. We're going to see this in pending. So what I like to do here is I'm going to start in logs because this is actually going to show you the different tasks that are executed. And so we're just going to watch this. What I did find is that it's really hard to troubleshoot it. So I ended up pulling out the, the code and iterating through the different commands and seeing where I would have issues because you just get like bad requests and stuff like that that get thrown back at you. And it's not particularly useful because you don't really know what's going on. I also really like that in their entire portal, it will auto refresh. So you're not worried about sitting there, you know, click on the refresh button up here over and over again. The first thing that we're going to be looking for is to see that the workspace gets created. Because that at least shows you that you're kind of in a good spot, you know, as it iterates through these, you know, a couple hundred lines of code. I lied there. Apparently that one didn't automatically do it. But in a lot of the screens, it'll actually auto-update. So, so you can see here now, it's working on building the, the desktop image. So you can see this is in progress. One of the things I like to do is click Details, and you can kind of see the different tasks that it's running through. And these will auto-refresh. So you can see here the VM finally finished creating. And so now we're moving on to doing some additional stuff. It's really cool. You see a lot of the the different details and results in here that they're that they're spitting out as they're leveraging their REST API. Just taking you back here for a second, you can see here that the it stopped the template VM. It's copying the template VM disk. So you're creating Nick, getting the temp VM, and now it's waiting for the Azure VM client to be ready. So we're just kind of popping in and out as some of these tasks. This does take a little bit of time, but this is the majority of the time for your whole build is just getting this image ready. Okay, so now that we're just creating the image, let's recap what happens. So what, what Nerdio does is it goes in, grabs the image, and so it's gonna, great, it's gonna grab the image, it's gonna create the NIC, creates the VM, installs that time zone redirection extension, probably uses that to configure some stuff. Then it uninstalls that extension, stops that VM. So then what it does is it copies that disk, creates another NIC for a temp VM, creates the temp VM, then basically waits for the Azure VM client. Then it'll remove the users from the temp VM, removes the users, remove user extension from the temp VM. Then it will sysprep it. Then when sysprep completes, it creates that image for you. You can see here, there's our Centrex image. And then it's going to clean up those resources. And so from that perspective, once it's all done, now you have a nice clean image that's being managed by Nerdio. And not only that, if you decide you want to get rid of it, you can, you can actually delete it right from Nerdio and it'll clean up all those resources so you're not you know creating unnecessary expenses. And that's kind of a neat thing because, I mean, this took what? 23, 24 minutes. I mean, that's sure as 
sure as hell a lot faster than you or I would be able to just, you know, build that image on our own, which is, you know, this kind of showcases some of the power that you do get with Nerdia with some of the orchestration and automation of tasks. So we're just waiting for this to finish up, then fingers crossed the rest of the tasks are going to go well, and then we'll have our AVD. We'll be back in a second. So you can see here, it's got our custom image, updates the tags. Then you'll see in here, this shows complete. Now we're going to go back over to the other side, and we're going to watch and see what goes on here as the Azure Runbook starts doing its thing. Next thing we should see is that host pool getting created. Now that creation is now in progress. Created the host pool, so that's good news. So now it's assigning users to the host pool. So since I screwed up and I, I messed up a line of my code, I'm just going to show you something fun out of this. So inside of the image, since I'm going to clean everything up and rerun, I'm going to click delete. You type confirm. It gives you options there too, but so you hit OK. And then if we check out details, because you know it's worth seeing, you know, when we screw up, it's just going to actually going to show you the same thing. So it's preparing to remove the image. It's going to tag resources, the removal. And so it's going to end up deleting everything for you to clean you up. Because yeah, amusingly, I, uh, I messed up my JSON, which is fine. It's a good learning opportunity anyway for everyone to kind of see how some of this stuff works. And so basically, it's rerunning here. It's going to delete everything it did. It's going to basically walk back. It's going to delete the NIC, delete storage, delete the VM, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, when you have to rerun it, so you see it's starting the VM, getting the AD config. It's good to know that, oh, look, I am actually enrolling it into and it's enter ID. So if I can screw that up, it's good to know. But it's just one of these good opportunities to see exactly what happens when, you know, you make mistakes. And that's, again, one of the nice things about Nerdio is that everything that you do, you can kind of walk back. You can actually, all inside of Nerdio, you can delete pools and all that good stuff, which is awesome. Anyway, we'll let this finish and do its thing, and then we'll be right back. All right, we're back, and our image completion is completed again. So let's see how we're doing. Check our logs. So you can see here that desktop image is complete. And now it's in the process of creating the host pool. Now it's assigning users to the host pool. It's updated the dynamic scale settings. Now it's updating stuff and it's also even updating the arm pool RDP settings. Now it's going to force out the auto scale process, which is basically going to start building your VMs. So let's go check that out. See if we can uh, see how things look. See here, we're still in the process of that getting up, which is fine. So you can see here now it's starting to add hosts. So look at this, it's adding a host with my naming convention, which is super awesome. It means that our Azure workbook has successfully ran, which is fantastic. And now it's just starting to build our VMs. And so that'll take some time. It's going to build your host. It's going to scale things up. But you can see overall, things have gone really well. We will take a couple minutes here. We're going to show some tips and tricks about leveraging the API and enhancing your script. So I'm going to take you over to the Swagger, which is pretty cool. So one of the really neat things about your Swagger that you don't get out of the, the traditional logs is that when you start looking at the script and you start debugging it, you just get these random 400s. It doesn't really tell you what's wrong. But by using the Swagger, it'll actually tell you and show you the inner messages and show you, okay, it's not just that it's a 400. It was a 400, for example, because in their code, they, didn't, they weren't setting the time zone. So I identified that. I updated the time zone. I retested. I re-ran, and things were working exactly like I needed them to. 
And that's the beautiful thing about the Swagger is it shows you kind of all their different API calls. And it gives you a good idea of like some of these example, some of the example bodies that they might have for, you know, say pooled or for that. And it's a really good practice because you can kind of go through and see all the different things you can do, for example, with host pools or with FS logics or whatever it happens to be, because we have also have automated and automatic FS logics settings being pushed down. And let's just finish things up by checking that out really quickly. So inside of our Azure environment, or actually it's the Nerdio setup, right? I am wrong again. FS logics. So one of the things that we did earlier on was, is that we kind of went in here and we enabled the FS logics. We enabled cloud cache. We like kept all these settings as default. We decided not to configure any of this stuff because what will end up happening is, is it builds these VMs and uh, Nerdio is going to actually automatically set up FS logics for you, which you're going to end up seeing, you know, as these VMs are built. And I'm going to hit OK here, and I'm going to assign. And by doing this, I'm in my workspace, and I can actually go look at the dynamic pool, and I can see here that it's actually building our host, and all the different things are going on. You can see here it's getting the AD config, it's getting the FS logics config, host pool properties, joining now it's joining Entra ID. This just shows you all of the different orchestration Nerdio is giving you, and that's what really makes it a really compelling platform. I hope everyone really enjoyed this. Make sure you hit subscribe. There's going to be a blog article accompanying all this because we learned a lot through building this out with Nerdio. I think that it's going to be really fun for everybody to check out.